الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين إن شاء الله ويكونتينيون وز مختصر منهاج القاصدين للإمام ابن قدامة المقدسي This will be the second class in the chapter uh, in the book Methodology of the Seekers Fadda Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah As for the knowledge of interactions which is the knowledge of the state of the heart such as fear, hope, being pleased with Allah's religion and his decree, honesty, sincerity and so forth then this is the knowledge by which the ranks of the major ulama were raised and their name become, became well known, as in the case with Sufyan Athauri, Abu Hanifa, Malik, Ashafi'i, and Ahmed. The ranks of those known as fuqaha and ulama after them were lower than those high positions only due to their busying themselves with the outward form of knowledge. So you will find the scholars of fiqh talking about a zihar, a la'an, race, racing horses, archery, and branching out into secondary issues which fill up eternity to complete and none of which is needed. Yet he will not make speak... A, make a mark, please, there, a zihar, a la'an. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. How do you want to use this? Pencil. Okay. Right to to be both the words under word the word zihar and li'an mm-hmm. to be both in English. Okay, translate. Translate, yes. Okay, translate. Okay. All right. Uh, you can start again. That you okay. see the fuqaha, they speak about zihar and la'an. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you will find the scholars of fiqh talking about zihar and la'an, racing horses, archery, and branching out into secondary issues which fill up eternity to complete and none of which is needed. Yet he will not speak about sincerity nor warn against showing off. And this is obligatory upon him as his destruction lays in his neglecting this. While the trivial issues mentioned are at best communal duties, and if he were to be asked about the reason for leaving or bringing the soul to account in regards to sincerity and showing off, he would not be able to answer you. But if he were to be asked why he busies himself with issues relating to al and archery, he will say because this is a communal duty. While this is true, it has escaped his notice that mathematics is also a communal duty, so why does he not busy himself with that? As the soul becomes clouded here, as its aim is to be seen and heard, off which is attained by debating religious issue and not through knowing mathematics. As you should know that the meaning of words have changed and taken away from what was intended by the righteous Salaf. An example to this is the word fiqh, for this word's meaning has been changed 
by being narrowed down and restricted to meaning the knowledge of the branches of legal law and their reason. Fiqh in the first generation used to refer to the knowledge of the path towards the hereafter, the recognition of the shortcomings of the soul and the thing that ruined the good deeds, strong comprehension of the lowliness of this world and strictly looking forward to the pleasures of paradise and having hearts overcome by fear of Allah. Thus Al-Hassan al-Basri said the person of fiqh is the one who abstains from this world and hopes for the hereafter, who has insight in regards to his religion, who is upright and continuous in the worship of Allah, who is pious, who is whole from intruding upon the honor of the Muslim and abstain from taking their wealth, and who gives advice to them. So basically we see and understand in this chapter that the author is talking about necessity of focusing if it's not equal, if it's not more at least equal to the same way we uh, focus about knowing the rules how to do certain things according to Islam. Although that both of them are required, the same way that you require to purify yourself and to know what breaks the wudu and what makes your salah acceptable or not acceptable, that also you need to be concerned about purification of the heart and the cleansing of the soul. But it's saying that most of the scholars that they write and go in details about rules of purification of the limbs, but they don't talk too much about purification of the heart, which you understand is something a main uh, one of the main reasons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this deen that we can focus in our soul, in our heart and try to provide them and elevate them to a rank that be capable to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with this. Okay. Thus the use of the term fiqh was more than anything else in regards to the knowledge of the hereafter and did not include giving legal verdicts at a primary level, which were only included in general terms. So the arising of this restricted use led to people being misled into singling out the knowledge of the outward legal verdicts while turning away from the knowledge of the interaction that leads to the hereafter. The second example of the word knowledge for it used to refer to knowing Allah and his sign, that is his blessing and action which affect his servant. The term's meaning was restricted by some who use it mostly to mean debating issues of fiqh, even when one is ignorant of the knowledge of tafsir and of the sunnah. The third example is the word tawheed, for it is used to mean seeing everything as being from Allah in a manner that cuts off turning the attention to the causes and means, so this results in trusting in Allah and being pleased with his decree. However, nowadays it has been made to refer to speaking about theological matters which were disliked to the seller. The fourth example, the terms admonition and zikr, Allah the Exalted says, of which the meaning is, and give admonition, for truly admonition benefit the believers. This is from Surah Al-Zariyat, verse number 55. And the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, When you pass by the meadows of paradise, then graze therein. The Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them, said, And what are the meadows of paradise? The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, The gatherings of zikr and tamizi. Okay, can you make a comment after this and say this is a weak hadith? Okay. Okay. So people have moved this meaning to meaning storytelling and the escapades and calamities which the gathering of the storytellers or made up of in our time. And whoever busies himself while giving admonition with mentioning the stories of those who preceded, he should know that most of what is narrated in that regard is not true. 
such as what they mention about Yusuf, alayhi salam, that he united, he untied his belt, and that he saw Yaqub biting his hand. And Da'ud, alayhi salam, that he sent Auriyah out to battle so as to be killed. Listening to things like this is harmful to one's iman. As for the escapades and the excesses which they mention, this is the most severe thing in regards to harming the masses because that includes stories of love, relationship, and the pain of separation. And most of those attending are the common folk whose hearts are filled with desire and the love of beauty. So listening to these stories only moves their hearts towards that which is already firm in their souls and ignites the fire of desire, all of which is corrupt. The fifth example is the term wisdom. Wisdom is attaining knowledge and acting upon it. Ibn Qutayba said a person will not be wise until he combines knowledge and action. Yet this term has come to be used in our time for the doctor and astrologist. And you should know that praiseworthy knowledge is of two types. Right. Shukta. This is supposed to be a new chapter here. Okay. Chapter. The praiseworthy knowledge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's entire praiseworthy knowledge? Mm hmm And you should know that praiseworthy knowledge is of two types. The first type is that which is praiseworthy up to its utmost level. So the more it increases, the better. An example is knowing the law and his attributes and action and his wisdom in basing the reward of the hereafter upon the action of this world. For this type of knowledge is required in and of itself and by itself. And by it, happiness in the hereafter is attained. It is the ocean whose depth is unknown, and those who hover in circles only hover on its shore, and its edges accord <coughs> excuse me. And its edges according to what is made easy for them. The second type of knowledge is those types of knowledge of which only a certain amount is praiseworthy, and they are those which we mention as been fought each of these has a level of which one cannot do without. Okay, for the kifaya, you need to put between two parentheses here, mm -hmm. okay? Individual duty. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> each of these has a level of which one cannot do without and a medium level and higher level. So be one of the two people, one who is busy with yourself or one who has become occupied with others after finishing with yourself. And beware of busying yourself with improving others before improving yourself. Listen carefully to this, everybody, okay? And beware of busying yourself with improving others before improving yourself. And busy yourself with improving your internal state and purifying it of the blameworthy attributes such as covetousness, envy, showing off, and self-conceit before improving your external state. So if you did not become free from that, then do not busy yourself with that which is for al kifay There are many people involved in that. For truly destroying yourself while seeking to improve others is stupidity. The example of this is like that of someone who has a scorpion on his shirt, but he is busying himself with brushing flies off of someone else. Then when you are free from working on yourself and what comes after that, then busy yourself with that which is fart al kifaya and take, take, take that in stages. So start with the book of Allah. Then look at the Sunnah of His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Quranic sciences, and analyze aspects of both, such as tafsir, abrogated and abrogating verses, what is authoritative 
what is obscure, and so forth. Then work on the secondary branches and usul al-fiqh, and so on for the rest of the types of knowledge, depending on what your lifespan allows and what the time available makes easy. To translate for sort of thing. Uh, you know, before this, uh, principles of fuk, mm-hmm. uh, but see what sunnah. He say first it starts with the book of Allah, mm-hmm. then with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then the knowledge of Quran, mm-hmm. and after this, analyze the aspects of both, such as tafsir the verses of the Qur'an that is abrogated, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what is authoritative, what is obscure, mm-hmm. mutashabiha, mm-hmm. and so forth. Then work on the secondary branch. Okay, then, mm-hmm. similar to the, in the Sunnah, similar to the so, Sunnah, that means do the same thing towards the Sunnah. Okay, so what, what the word similar? Then. Then? Okay, no, before, after, yes. Similar, that means do the same thing with the Sunnah, you understand, yeah. to learn about what is abrogated, what, 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 all these things. So the word similarly, similarly do this uh, with, towards the Sunnah. Uh, similarly work on the secondary branches. Yeah. He called them secondary branches and usul of fifth and so on for the rest of the type of knowledge. Yes, before the branches, okay, say similarly mm-hmm. would be the Sunnah. Mm-hmm. Comma, and after this, the branches. Okay, then work, then work on the secondary branches, yes. and, so, okay. and so on, mm-hmm. for the rest of the type of knowledge, depending on what your lifespan allows. Mm-hmm. Do not spend your whole life on one subject. Okay, this is something very important that we have to focus on it also, as a student of knowledge. Some people sometimes you go, and all what they focus, about the Tajweed, and they learn, you understand, Hafs, and after this go to Warsh, after this go to Kalun, and after this you understand, and keep going on one hour of the knowledge of Islam, and get it more by different dialogue and different style and all these things, while the rest, they don't know anything about the Sunnah, they don't know anything about the Sira. This is not helpful, okay? Like somebody doing exercise, only for one arm, never do exercise for the whole body or for the other left arm. Mm-hmm. So all what you're doing, always making lifting with the right hand, making exercise, okay? Mm-hmm. So I said, be careful that you do not spend all your life focusing on one art of the mm-hmm. knowledge. Do not spend your whole life on one subject, trying to reach its highest level. For truly, the sciences are many, yet life is short. These levels of knowledge are tools which are sought so as to reach other than them, and everything which is sought as a means to other than it should not cause the final aim to be forgotten. Mm-hmm. And know that debate which is sought for the sake of... Okay. Chapter. Mm-hmm. New chapter now. Mm-hmm. A scholar which is Knowledge doesn't benefit him. It's supposed to be a new chapter here. Okay, scholar. Whose knowledge does doesn't not benefit him. Knowledge. Does not benefit or benefit him? Doesn't benefit him, doesn't help him. Mm-hmm. Okay. And know that debate which is sought for the sake of uncovering the opponent and for fame is a source of blameworthy characteristics. And the one involved in that hardly is safe from arrogance and belittling those below him and from self-conceit due to his being above many of his companions in status. And he is not safe from showing off, as the majority of people who debate in our time do so in order to have people know of their overcoming their opponent and to receive thanks and praises. Thus a man may waste his life with those types of knowledge which help him in debating 
but do not benefit him in the hereafter. New section on the manners of the teacher and the student. As for the student. One second, please. Yeah. It's been narrated, you don't have this, in no. the hadith, no. that the Prophet ﷺ, the worst people, kind of people, okay, write missing hadith. Uh, this is before the new section, correct? Yes. Chapter mm -hmm. uh, uh, on the manners of the teacher and students. As for the student, then it is befitting for him to give preference to purifying the soul from the lowly attributes and blameworthy characteristics, as knowledge is an act of worship of the heart, and it is proper for him to cut off all ties that keep him preoccupied with other than his study. As the mind falls short of understanding the realities of knowledge when it is scattered. And truly, the Salaf used to put knowledge in front of everything else. It has been reported that Imam Ahmed did not get married until after he reached 40 years of age. Abu Bakr al-Anbari was given a servant girl as a gift. So when she entered upon him, he was thinking about the ruling on an issue that it escaped him. So he said, Take her to the traitor. She said, Have you done any have have you done any wrong? He said Did I commit any wrong? She she's asking about herself. Mm -hmm. Okay, here it is it's talking about him. So she she said, Have I done any wrong instead of you? They have the word here you. Okay. So it should be I. No, she's asking, she's him, asking him. Have I done something wrong? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I need to change the article. So she has, she said, have I done any wrong? He said, no, except that my heart became busy thinking about you, and it is not befitting for someone such as you to prevent me from my studies. And it is proper for the student to submit his affairs to the teacher, just as a sick person submits his affairs to the doctor, to be humble with him and to be at his service. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, used to lead the ride of Zayd ibn Thabit, radiallahu anhu, saying, this is how we were ordered to treat our ulama. And if the student is too prideful, scholars. yes, scholars, to treat the, our scholars. Mm. And if the student is too... Ordered to be put, scholars. Okay, I'll translate. Okay. And if the student is too prideful to take benefit except from the one characterized with higher level of knowledge, then he is ignorant as wisdom is the treasure of the believer. Whenever, wherever he finds it, he takes it. Ali radiallahu anhu said, from the rights of the scholar upon... And something missing here. Mm -hmm. I believe his opinion for the opinion of his Teacher, if he made a mistake, the scholar, this would be beneficial to the student. Mm -hmm. Then, the right, right. There is a line missing. Mm -hmm. Okay, line missing. Okay. Yes, please. I'm sorry. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Ali radiallahu anhu said from the rights of the alam the scholar upon you is that if you greet the people in a general manner then you should also greet him specifically and you should sit immediately in front of him and do not point at him with your hand nor signal at him with your eye nor overburden him with questions nor abide him nor aid him in answering a question, nor harass him when he feels lazy, nor persist questioning him when he refuses to answer, nor take hold of his shirt, 
uh, stand, it says page 16, to leave, nor expose his secret nor expose his secret, nor backbite anyone in his presence, nor seek his mistakes. And if he errs, then accept his excuse and do not say to him, I heard so-and-so says such-and-such, or so-and-so says other than what you say, nor prefer another scholar above him in his presence, nor become adverse to him due to continually keeping his company, nor see yourself as above being at his service. And if he has a need, beat the people in fulfilling that. For he is like a palm tree from which you hope some fruit will fall for you. Mm -hmm. This is something very important. He understands that there's something missing nowadays. A lot of people, they don't know the right of the scholar of the, of the people. Okay? And like I said, that we see people do not know how even to address the person who teaches them. And uh, this is not, understand. if a person really wants to be a student of knowledge, he has to know how to have the adab and the discipline, the proper behavior with the person who teaching him the deen. So maybe we can hear this again. Yeah. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said the rights of the scholar. Mm -hmm. Ali, radiallahu anhu, said from the rights of the scholar upon you is that if you greet the people in a general manner, then you should also greet him specifically. And you should seat immediately, you should sit immediately in front of him and do not point at him with your hand, nor signal at him with your eye, nor overburden him with questions nor aid him in answering the question, nor harass him when he feels lazy, nor persist in questioning him when he refuses to answer, nor take hold of his shirt, nor expose if his... If he get up. Okay. Hold his shirt if he get up. Okay. That means you understand he wants to finish uh -huh. or leave. Uh -huh. Now you don't understand. Say, no, sit down, sit down, because... This is not proper, you understand? Do not, you understand? Pull his soap or his shirt when he wants to get up. Okay, yeah, I see now. Okay. Nor take hold of his shirt if he stands to leave, nor expose his secrets, nor backbite anyone in his presence, nor seek his mistakes. And if he errs, then accept his excuse and do not say to him, I heard so and so say such and such, or so-and-so says other than what you say, nor prefer another scholar above him in his presence, nor become adverse to him due to continually keeping his company, nor see yourself as above being at his service. And if he has a need, beat the people in fulfilling that, for he is like a palm tree from which you hope some fruit will fall for you. Mm -hmm. And it is proper for the Waiting in the study of knowledge. Let he avoids listening to the difference of people. I don't understand this word. Okay, waiting. Okay, remember in studies and call if in the matter is only now. Let the the student of knowledge or the person who starting to learn, okay, to be careful. And listening to different differences of people? Yeah. Okay, that means if you are a new student, you're just starting, okay? Mm -hmm. Now you're going to go to listen to the people, okay, with different opinions. Oh, okay. So okay. They're trying to, he's using this word to describe the student of knowledge or one who's starting out to study. And he said, and it is proper for the one who starts to study um, in knowledge that he avoid the, the beginners in the seeking knowledge. Okay, the beginner, yeah, okay. It is proper for the beginner. In the that study means of he shouldn't be listening to other people. Mm -hmm. This is your sheikh is teaching you. Mm -hmm. You understand? You don't hear from here and here and here, okay? Mm -hmm. Because now you're coming back again with somebody said something this and that is different stories. Mm -hmm. And this is going to make, you understand, 
him tired, give him fatigue to his mind, he's not going to be able mm -hmm. to handle all this. Mm -hmm. And it is proper for the beginner in the study of knowledge that he avoid listening to the differences of people, as that scatters his thoughts and weakens his mentality. Good. And it is proper for him to take the best of every subject, for life is not long enough to attain every type of knowledge. Then on top of that, he should turn his whole energy to the most sublime of all forms of knowledge, which is the knowledge that is linked with the hereafter, with which the certainty which Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, radiallahu anh, attained is attained. Attained is attained. Hmm? He says, uh, and which the certainty which Abu Bakr as-Siddiq attained. Yes, that means the queen that he had reached the position of certainty, mm -hmm. okay, with this form of knowledge. He achieved it. Mm -hmm. Okay, the way I would come to this. The knowledge way. related to the hereafter, mm -hmm. which caused Abu Bakr al-Siddiq to mm -hmm. achieve, okay, what the he certainty. Achieved. Yeah? To achieve what he achieved? Because he has said in English, yes. he attained what he had attained, yes. what he is already attained, is the certainty. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. We need to, we need to clear. Okay. Clear. So you can... Yeah, clear. Make clear. That means the knowledge of the hereafter, which that make you reach to certainty, mm -hmm. which you made Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anh, mm -hmm. to such position, that the Prophet وسلم, was witness for him mm -hmm. by saying that Abu Bakr he didn't achieve this. Did he mention the hadith there? No, no, he didn't. That the Prophet وسلم, said, became witness for him. He didn't say that? No. He what? just said, in which the certainty which Abu Bakr Siddiq attained. Okay. He didn't mention hadith. Okay. So put, uh, make. Yes. Uh, and hadith? Or oh, hadith missing? Yes, missing. Okay. As for the teacher, then there are also duties which he should carry out, amongst which are being compassionate to the student and treating them as he treats his own children. Now, what we talked in the chapter before was about the adab and the discipline of the student, mm -hmm. and now he's talking about what is the sheikh or the teacher mm -hmm. that should be some characteristic of him. Okay, as for the... As for the teacher, then there are also duties which he should carry out, amongst which are being compassionate to the students and treating them as he treats his own children. The teacher should not ask any wage for his teaching, nor intend by that any worldly reward or praise. Rather, he should teach them for Allah's sake, and not see that he has done any favor to the students. He should look at the students as having preferred status over him, as they have readied their hearts to draw close to Allah by planting knowledge therein, and thus they are like the one who rents out a piece of land to one, who will cultivate it. So it is not proper for the teacher to seek any reward except from Allah. And thus the Salaf used to refuse to accept gifts from their students. And amongst the teacher's duties is that he should not withhold any advice from the student and should warn them against bad characteristics in an indirect manner as far as possible without rebuke because constant rebuke removes the veil of reverence. The teacher should also gauge the understanding of the student and his level of intelligence and not forward anything which is beyond the student's understanding and above his comprehension. Ali radiallahu anhu said, Truly, I have here knowledge which, if I find someone worthy, I would burden him with it. And a shafi'i recited, should I scatter pearls amongst those who graze livestock? Should I compose prose for the herders of sheep? 
and whoever bestows knowledge upon the ignorant causes it to be lost, and whoever denies it to those who deserve it has acted oppressively. Okay, when he said Ali, mm -hmm. it's been reported that I have been commanded to talk to people according to the ability of their mind, mm -hmm. right beside it. Mm -hmm. You understand? So after Ali Rari Allah, no, no, Allah no, before uh, Ali. Before him. Mm. Okay, uh, the teacher should. Uh, it been narrated from the Prophet mm. that he said, This is it. I have been commanded to talk no. to. No, that's not To address the people. Yes, he just said. Okay, do you see Imam Shafi? Yeah, he yeah. says, Truly, I have here knowledge which I find. If I find someone worthy, I would burden him with it. And a Shafi recited, should I scatter pearls among those? Before this, before Ali, one line, what to say? Okay, the teacher should also gauge the understanding of the student. Okay, so the hadith is not there, period. There's no hadith, no. Okay, I think what he's doing is that any hadith that is not authentic, he's jumping it. Mm -hmm. This is what it is, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but make, make a mark there, please. Between Ali and, and what came Gazi, you understand, missing hadith. Okay, between Ali and uh, Shafi? No, before. Before Ali. Before Ali. One line, and the line before this, right, is missing hadith. Okay, missing hadith. Okay. Okay, can I get the question, please? Okay, continue, please. Okay, <clears throat> the teacher should act upon what he knows, and his deeds should not belie his words. As Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 44, Do you order people with piety while forgetting your own self, while you recite the scripture which denounces such conduct? New section, concerning the righteous Did Allah. Did not say Ali after this? No. Ali said no. Okay. Right. The missing quotation by Ali. Okay, and this is uh, after the uh, uh, Surah Baqarah verse 44. Mm -hmm. Comes after. The the al -kitab and while you're reciting the book. So the Quotation is after the, the Quranic verse or before? No, after. After. So the missing quotation, correct? Yes. Missing. Quote. Okay. How many pages do you have? Two? Uh, One, two, three. Okay, we're going to four. 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 Well, three, three and a half. Okay, we'll stop here, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastabru fa natu ilayh. This is starting a new chapter after this? Mm -hmm. yeah? Yes. What to say? Uh, a section concerning the righteous ulama and corrupt ulama. Okay. Any questions, any comments, any concerns? Jazakumullah khairan. Any questions, any concerns? Subhanakullah wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka. Allahumma zidni. Ashhadu an la Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.